let's finish up this lecture with another example. So we're going to look at another type of pulse and signal. This pulse will have a period of t as before, an amplitude of 1, so this is uh, capital T, it's going to be centered around 0, and it has a width of w. You can write this as minus t over 2, and this is capital T over 2. So let's find the Fourier, transform, Fourier series coefficients of this, the complex Fourier series coefficients. So we're going to integrate from, might as well go from minus t over 2 to t over 2. But we notice that when we integrate over that period, we only have a non-zero function for the width w. So we can actually, okay, so I'll go ahead and write this, but we're going to, we're going to change the limits here in a moment. We'll change it to minus w over 2 to w over 2. And our function has a value of 1, e to the minus j n omega naught t dt. So then we'll have minus 1 over j n 2 pi over capital T times capital T times uh, e to the minus j n 2 pi over capital T times w over 2 minus e to the minus j, that'll be plus j n 2 pi over capital T w over 2. So this will take some cleaning up. Um, we'll have minus 1 over n pi times e to the, actually we'll put a plus there, and we'll go e to the plus j n um, pi w over t minus e to the minus j n pi w over t divided by 2j, which yields, we see a sign here, so we have a sign of n pi w over t divided by n pi. Let's rewrite that um, as t over, sorry, as w over t times sine of n pi w over t divided by n pi w over t. And this right here is of the form sine x over x. And we have a special name for that, which is called the sinc function, sinc x. So we can write this as w over t times the sinc of n pi w over t. Now let's define a variable d, duty cycle, as equal to w over t. So if we have a pulse that has a period, capital T, and a width of w, then the ratio of the width of the pulse to the total period is the, uh, is the duty cycle. So finally, let's rewrite this one last time. F of n is equal to the duty cycle times the sink of n pi times the duty cycle. Okay, so what have we found? We found that a pulse that has a period of T, capital T, and a duty cycle of d times t has a frequency response that looks like like this. We'll have n f of n 
And it turns out that if you plot a sine x over x, you get a sinusoid that, uh, let me draw this up here, a sine x over x starts at, is it, starts at 1 at the origin, and you get this decaying undulation like that. Okay, so we will get the same kind of response. It's an even function. Okay, it's not very well drawn. So there is a DC value in this case because it's pulsing from zero to from zero to one. So there's a DC value. There'd be a value at at all values of n. Okay, so I'll just draw these in here to indicate. It's important to remember that for the Fourier series, the frequency spectrum is always discrete. There's only frequencies at discrete points in frequency. And so even though I've traced out the sync function shape, um, it actually is just the envelope for these discrete um, spectral lines, okay? And so what this tells us is that to create a pulse, um, it takes uh, an infinite number of harmonics, sinusoidal harmonics, of decreasing amplitude, but also as the harmonics increase in frequency, they alternate in magnitude. And the um, the spacing of these f frequencies, the, the spacing of the, uh, of the harmonics, how close they are, and their amplitude are affected by, uh, by the duty cycle. So for uh, n equal to zero, the height is actually d, okay? which means that uh, as the duty cycle gets smaller, uh, the uh, the magnitude of at at zero will become at frequency zero will become smaller and smaller. So I have an animation to to show you to help visualize this. All right, here we are showing f of n as a function of n. So I'm going from minus twenty to twenty, showing those uh, those forty forty one terms, and we are going to be changing the duty cycle you see up in the top there, D is the duty cycle, so we're starting at 5% and we'll go all the way up to 100%. Notice, let me stop it here, that when we get up to a hundred percent. The only spectral line we have is the spectral line at n equals zero because that is the only frequency, e to the j zero, and it has a magnitude of one. So at a hundred percent duty cycle, our f of t is just a constant value of one. If we go down to five percent duty cycle, so now five percent is a narrow pulse, okay? And if you recall from uh, when we introduced the impulse uh, function, we said that the impulse function has infinite magnitude, amplitude, and zero time duration in the finite area of one if you integrate the time function. Um, but if you look at the frequency spectrum of an impulse, it has all frequencies. And so it's a flat line. And we're seeing something that is similar here. Notice that as the duty cycle gets smaller, uh, this this spectrum uh, gets starts spreading out. So it's still a sync function, but you don't see the undulation oscillation above and below the x-axis until you get to much higher harmonics. So it's looking somewhat constant here, right? Albeit the the magnitude, the the highest amplitude of any of the spectral lines is going down because now it's just duty cycle of five, okay, the five percent but it's looking more and more impulsive. The difference between this and an impulse is that if as you make the duty cycle tend towards zero, which would be like 
like an impulse, you are not correspondingly increasing the amplitude. The amplitude of this pulse is still one. And so the overall um, scaling of the spectral lines are diminishing. They're going down towards zero rather than staying like at an amplitude of one, which is what happens with the impulse. But to do that, you have to have an infinite amplitude during that infinitesimal uh, time when it actually fires.